Hello everyone. In the lecture today, we will try to finish all the other contents in the stress and the strain analysis for flexible pavement. In the previous lectures, we introduced some methods to analyze the stress and the strain theoretically. There are some assumptions in this series, which makes it different from the properties of the materials in reality. In the theoretical models, we assume that each layer is a homogeneous and isotropic. Also, the modulus of elasticity is set as constant value. In addition, the layers does not have any limitation to the tensile stress, and there isn't any slippage between the layers. However, for the real materials, usually for each layer, the property of the material is not homogeneous and anisotropic. In addition, for the modulus of elasticity, in reality it is a function of the stress, strain, and the force applied to the layer. In addition, at most of the case, the soil cannot take extension, which means there will be some limitations about the tensile stresses. Finally, for two layers, the slippage can happen between them. And this should be an important factor for us to analyze the stress and the strain in reality. The figure here shows the vertical stress distribution in the flexible pavement under the circular contact pressure. In this figure, the red line shows the result from the bosonic net solution. And the black lines comes from the field experiment with three different materials, including limestone, gravel, and sand. Clearly, the bosonic solution can provide the similar trend to the field data. However, the absolute value about the vertical stress at different distance from the center of the contact pressure is very different from the bosonic solution. And this difference should be considered as the limitation of the theoretical models. In the previous lecture, we introduced two analytical methods for the analysis of the stress and strain in the flexible pavement. Here we will introduce the third one, automatic approach. For the first two methods, Bosinex solution and Burmester theory, both of them will provide an approximation about the stress and the strain analysis. The Bosinex solution is applied for one layer system while the Burmester theory is applied for two-layer system. Also, the Bosinac theory is one special case of the multi-layer elasticity theory. The third one, Oldmark approach, actually will combine the advantages of the Burmester theory and the Bosinac solution. In this approach, we will first convert a two-layer system to an equivalent single-layer system and then the Bosinesque solution is applied to find out the deflection and the stress applied to that layer. The automatic procedure can be applied for a two-layer system and converted to an equivalent single-layer system. The figure on the left shows one example about a two-layer system, where the modulus of elasticity for the subgrade is set as ES, for the upper layer, we have the elastic modulus as E1 and the thickness as H. We also assume that the Poisson's ratio for both layers are the same. Actually, the automatic procedure can be applied for the case with different Poisson's ratio. Um, this is the real system that we want to analyze. With the automatic procedure, we will convert the upper layer to an equivalent layer with the same elastic modulus to the subgrade. And we will estimate the thickness of the equivalent layer. For this conversion, we want to make sure that the stiffness of the layer will be the same before and after the conversion. Once we obtain the equivalent layer, we can then use the Bosinex solution to find out the deflection and the vertical stress.
The conversion from the automatic approach you will actually try to generate an equivalent layer with the same slab stiffness. Actually, the stiffness of the layer is defined by the equation here. d equal to e times h cube divided by 12 times 1 minus mu square. Here, e is the elastic modulus of the layer and h is the thickness. In this situation, we will have the elastic modulus as E1 and the thickness as H for the upper layer. And we want to convert this one to an uh, equivalent layer with the elastic modulus of ES and the thickness of HE. By solving this equation, we can find that HE equal to H times E1 over ES to the power of one third. And that's the way for us to find out the equivalent thickness from the automatic approach. In reality, due to the complexity of the materials, we need to multiply by 0.9 for the estimation of the equivalent thickness. And uh, this one should be applied for two layer system. If we applied for the multi layer system, then we will multiply 1.0 for the first layer, and for the rest of the layer, we just multiply them by 0.8. With this adjustment, we can get a more accurate approximation about the equivalent thickness. With the equivalent layer, we can then estimate the deflection and the vertical stress based on the Bosinesque solution. For the distributed load, the deflection at point A, which is the point at the bottom of the first layer and is located on the center line of the contact area. The deflection can be calculated by this formula. And this one is actually shown in the previous lecture with the Boussinan solution. If we have the point load applied to the first layer, then the deflection at one point A, which has the horizontal distance from the point to the center line as R, and the deflection can be estimated by this equation. It can also be simplified as W0 over 2 times 1 over R cubed plus 1 over R. Here R is shown in this formula. Um, so with the equivalent layer, we can clearly see that the deflections in the Flexible payment can all be estimated based on the Bosinesk solution. The automatic approach also provides a formula for us to estimate the deflection at the surface of the payment. In this case, we can estimate the deflection at point B, which is located on the center line of the contact area. Basically, the deflection at point B equals to the deflection at point A plus the deflection in the upper layer and uh, delta omega equals to the formula here if you compare this formula with the equation for omega a you can see that for most of the case omega delta omega is much smaller than omega a in that sense we can ignore the additional deflection well, we can assume that the deflection on the surface of the pavement is almost the same to the deflection applied at the point A. The Boussinac solution also provides the estimation about the stress applied at the point A. Basically, the stress applied at point A can be estimated by the equation here. In this equation, P is the load applied 
to the surface of the first layer and we can also estimate the vertical stress based on the contact pressure and the equivalent thickness in addition we can introduce the new mark solution to estimate the stress with the distributed load and the equation below shows the estimation about the vertical stress from this method now we can summarize the stress and the deflection applied at point A based on the automark approach. The two figures shows the original and the equivalent two-layer system. Assuming that the radius of the contact area is A and the contact pressure is set as Q. And we have the original thickness of the first pavement as H and the elastic modulus as E1. The modulus of elasticity for the subgrade is set as ES. And uh, with the automatic approach, we can find out the equivalent layer with the thickness of HE. And the HE is determined by the equation here. Then we can find out the deflection at the point A, which is in the point at the interface on the center line of the contact area and uh, the deflection is estimated by the equation here also we can estimate the vertical stress applied at point a by this equation with that we can actually uh, get the analysis about the stress and the strain and the deflection based on the automatic approach by convert the original layers to the equivalent layers. In the real world implementation of the proposed methods, there are some points we have to pay attention. First, the parameters in the models are designed to represent the real world materials properties. However, they cannot 100% accurately represent the actual properties. In that sense, the model is just the approximation of the real situation. Second, when estimating the deflection and the stresses, we have to clearly state the assumptions made in the models. For example, for the Bosinesque solution, we have to assume that the, the pavement is uh, homogeneous and the layer is uh, isotropic. With the analysis in the previous pages and the previous lectures, we can quickly summarize the effect of the payment on the system response to traffic loads. First, the radial strain is usually proportional to the second order derivative of omega, which is the deflection to the radial distance. And this one is uh, almost the same to minus two times omega zero divided by HE square. Also, we have the radial stress proportional to E1 times epsilon R. For the vertical strain, epsilon Z is proportional to sigma Z over ES. In these equations, we have HE as the equivalent thickness of the first layer. Moreover, if we increase the thickness of the upper layer, H, or the modulus ratio E1 over E2, the radial strain at the bottom of the pavement will be reduced. In general, uh, with higher value of H, the pavement stress will be smaller. While if we increase the value of E1, the pavement stress will be increased. In addition, if we increase the thickness of the upper layer or the value of E1 over E2, the vertical stress at the top of the subgrid can be reduced. Usually, larger H will reduce the shear stress in the pavement, and the higher E1 also induce larger shear stress in the pavement. Finally, we can have a quick summary about the methods applied for the stress and the strain analysis for flexible pavement. We have the Bosinesque solution applied for one layer system and the Burmester theory is applied for two layer system. This theory is based on the elastic theory. 
Also, we introduced the automatic approach, which can convert a two-layer system to an equivalent single-layer system and apply the boosting neck solution to find the deflection and the stress. In addition, we introduced the multi-layer elasticity theory for the identification of the stress and the strain from the general situations with multiple layers. In this page, we summarize the equations for the estimation of the vertical stress and the deflections with the point and distributed load in single layer system, and they are actually defined by the Boussinesque solution. The equations in this page are applied for the estimation of the vertical stress and the deflection based on the Burmester theory for a two layer system. Actually, the values of the vertical stress and the deflection should also be obtained from the charts that we showed in the previous lecture. For the automatic approach, we will actually transform the two layer system to an equivalent single layer system and apply the boosting net solution to find out the deflection and the stresses. Uh, the most important uh, parameter we want to estimate is the equivalent layer thickness, which is uh, estimated by the equation here. For the two layer system, in order to find out the more accurate equivalent thickness, we have to call the second equation. Also with the equivalent layer thickness, we can identify the deflection at the surface and the bottom of the pavement structure. Now let's go through some examples to understand the implementation of the proposed methods. In the first example, we are considering the circular load with the radius of 152 millimeters, and the uniform pressure is applied with the value of 550 kilopascal. It's actually applied to a two-layer system. The subgrade has an elastic modulus of 35 megapascal and it can support a maximum vertical stress of 52 kilopascal. If the hot mix effort has an elastic modulus of 3.5 gigapascal, what's the required thickness on the full depth pavement? First, in the solution, we want to find out all the parameters shown in the assumption. For the two-layer system, we have E1 equal to 3.5 gigapascal, E2 as 35 megapascal. Also, we have the maximum vertical stress, sigma C as 52 kilopascal, and the contact pressure Q equal to 550 kilopascal. Also, we know the radius of the contact arrow as 152 millimeters. Then in the solution, we can find out the modulus ratio E1 over E2 as 3.5 gigapascal over 35 megapascal, that is 100. For the ratio between the maximum vertical stress and the contact pressure, that is 50 over 550 equal to 0 0.1. Then from the figure that we showed in the previous lecture, we can find out the value of A over H1 as 1.15. With that, we can find the value of H1 as 152 over 1.15, that is 132 millimeters, which is the minimum thickness for the full depth pavement. In the second example, we assume that 
a thin surface treatment is applied on the granule base with an elastic modulus of 175 megapascal and all the other settings the same to example one. Or we want to find out the thickness of the base course. For this solution, we have E1 equal to 175 megapascal. Also, we know that E2 is 35 megapascal. With that, we can find the modulus ratio as E1 over E2 equal to 5. Also, sigma C over Q equal to 0.1 as we showed in the previous example. Then from the figure on the right, we can identify the value of A over H1. For the modulus ratio, that is 5. And then based on the value of sigma C over Q as 0.1. We can find the value of the A over H1 as 0.4. Then the thickness can be estimated as A over 0.4, that is 152 over 0.4, which is 381 millimeters. In the third example, assume that we apply the circular pressure to the subgrade directly. The diameter of the contact area is 30 inches and the contact pressure is set as 10 psi. We observed the deflection at the center of the contact area as 0.1 inches. Also, we don't know the modulus of elasticity for the subgrade. After that, we construct the base course on top of the subgrade, and the thickness of the base course is 6 inches. And we apply a load to the base course. The load is uniformly distributed to a circular area. The diameter is also 30 inches, and the contact pressure is 20 psi. We also observe the deflection at the bottom of the base course as 0.1 inch. Then based on this information, we want to find the value of ES and E1. First, let's see how we can find out ES. From the figure on the left, we can get the deflection as 0.1 inch, Q equal to 10 psi, and a equal to 15 inches. Then we can recall the equation for the estimation of the deflection. Omega equal to 3 over 2 times QA over ES times A over A square plus Z square to the power of half. Here, the deflection is measured at the surface of the subgrade. So we have z equal to zero. With that, we get the deflection as three over two times QA divided by ES. So we can then derive the value of ES as 3 over 2 times QA divided by omega. In this problem, we have Q as 10, A is 15, and uh, omega is 0.1. So we find out the value of ES as 2250 psi. In the next step, we want to find out the value of E1. To estimate the deflection 
at the point of A, which is located at the interface of the base course and sub weight, and also it's located on the center line of the contact area. With that, we have omega equal to 2 over 3 over 2 times QA divided by ES times A over square root of A square plus HE square. We calculate the deflection based on the equivalent layer for the base course. In this equation, we know omega is 0.1 and uh, Q is 20, A is 15, ES is uh, 2250. Then we can solve the equation to find out the value of HE. With that, we get HE equal to 45 inches. Also, we know that HE can be estimated based on the automatic approach. HE equal to H1 times E1 over E3 to the power of one third. So HE is a 45, H1 is 6, and E1 is a 2250. Oh, E1 is an unknown, ES is a 2250. Then we can find out the value of E1 as ninety five thousand psi. So that's all about lecture today. Thank you very much for your attention. With that we finished all the contents in the analysis of the stress and strain on flexible pavement. In the next lecture we will focus on the pavement mechanics analysis for rigid pavement.